Hi, good evening to everyone. Thank you again for joining me. I am doing a follow-up presentation because uh, this recent video got a lot of attention and there were so many questions that came up with regards to the perspective or the concerns from the unvaccinated cohort. So I thought to myself that I should try and explain a little bit more about what I was talking about to clarify the issue. If you haven't seen the video as yet, um, it was just done yesterday. You'll see it on the Vision Health channel. And um, I was talking about the danger of COVID reinfection. And it had a picture of a snake there, which some people didn't like. But the purpose was to really get people to think that this is not something to play around with. This is an important point. So I am talking about this unvaccinated immune bubble. Are they getting too complacent? And what I am highlighting here is just a bit about the science and helping people to understand why, in truth, we're all in this together. Before I start, if you're interested in some of my further thoughts, please, there is a course at Macmillan Research that you can click on. And in it, I talk about those points about mucosal immunity, uh, the current state of COVID, airway strategies, over-the-counter supplements, prescription medication, treatment algorithms, innovative ideas. This is very important. But the point being is that if you're interested in what I have to share on that, click on the link in the description to get more information. So let's start with a very simple point. Over the past few years, I have heard much of the different cohorts, different perspectives. Initially, when the vaccines were being rolled out and the unvaccinated were being criticized and made fun of, uh, this gradually started to change as natural immunity understanding kicked in and the criticisms were no longer as valid. And what then happened is that you almost had a situation where the unvaccinated cohort in my view, started to get too smug. Smug in the sense that they felt now that natural immunity is all that they need, and so they therefore don't need to worry. That's the bit that I'm trying to see if I can get people to understand. We are all in this together. And the point is simple. If you were, were hurt and isolated, because of the perspective of the mandates and so on. And then in another situation, you are making fun of people who could be at serious risk of disease and other issues. That's just not appropriate. We are in this together. It's about looking out for each other. That's the point. It is, does not help anyone for any one group to start pointing at the other one as to who is in a better position. So let's try and stay on target and look for solutions. So the first thing that we have to do is get back to a few basic points about this actual paper. So this again, as I mentioned before, acute and post-acute sequelae associated with SARS-CoV-2 reinfection. As I said, it was published in November 22, um, and it has some very important risks with regards to reinfections. In effect, double 2.7, 2.17 times um, risk of death with reinfection. And you can see here 3.32 times um, risk of hospitalization. This is not to be played around with. My purpose when I did that video yesterday was to make people understand that this is serious. This is not to be ignored, and we have to try and find strategies that will allow us to be able to overcome this, and it requires us all thinking together. Now, one of the things that caught the attention of people, and I think I need to clarify it, is that when you look at this image here and look at all-cause mortality, a lot of people were muttering about the fact that no vaccination still had a significant uh, mortality, all-cause mortality, even though it was lower than those with two or more vaccinations. And as I had pointed out yesterday, one vaccination seemed to have the highest risk of all-cause mortality, which I said needs to be addressed urgently from a public health and scientific point of view. 
But what you have to realize is that when they were looking at this cohort for all cause mortality, they were looking from March 2020 to April 2022. So this is the whole duration covering all of the various uh, viruses up to Omicron in April. And so you would certainly have people in this cohort who were not vaccinated, who were at high risk for severe COVID, who would have died. And that would have been an, an important part as to why this mortality is up. The question would be asked is, since we have had Omicron, what would this look like now? And I suspect you would find that this here, because of mucosal immunity, would be very close to uh, the baseline number, this may still be out there. And so we don't have any clear statistics on it at present, but it's important to understand that that's part of the reason why you saw higher mortality at that time, because it was covering a two-year period and the vaccines did protect against severe COVID-19. So if somebody wasn't vaccinated and at high risk, they would have potentially had higher mortality in that cohort. So that's the explanation around that. But here is the, the bit that I want to really get across. So as I said, natural mucosal immunity is essentially like this. This is, this is how I've always described it. This is the image I've put together. And you can see here, this is the virus. And the virus will come in through the nose into the upper airway. It tends to infect in the nasal, nasopharyngeal region. It will then replicate. And as it continues to replicate, it will break through the barrier to get into the bloodstream. Okay. Once it has broken through the barrier into the bloodstream, that's often when people get symptoms. Okay, because then you get the immune response, the interferon response occurring systemically. That's now virus getting in, antibodies are being produced, it's getting to the lymph nodes. And so this barrier, this black line here, represents the mucosal barrier. It's very sophisticated. It's multiple layers of immunity and it protects against, even though, and this is an important point, you can get an infection without symptoms. It's just that the virus can't replicate beyond getting the, into that mucosal region. And so what it's about is trying to prevent the virus from getting into the systemic circulation. And this, in my view, is where we start to see these cumulative risks. This was from the paper again, and this here shows something that really is quite significant. They are looking here at different infections, one versus a two versus three. So here, one infection is in green, two infections is in orange, three infections here is in purple. And this here is showing you again from the baseline, which is this dotted line here, one infection is a higher, slightly higher risk of hospitalization. And this is the same all the way down for cardiovascular symptoms, coagulation, diabetes, all the way down. Two infections is significantly up for hospitalization. And again, for all the sequelae going down, three infections has the highest risk across the board in every single aspect of the impact of the disease. And so the point is, the more people are infected, the greater the longer term impact. So people may not die, but it's almost as if you it, it, it's hitting them and every time it hits them, it makes them weaker. That's where I think the complacency is coming from in the vaccinated commun unvaccinated commu cohort. So this here is an image that I've used. And you can think of that mucosal immunity like a bubble. So nice bubble around you that's protecting you. And all of this here is virus circulating all the time. And because of this bubble, you're breathing and therefore the virus is not getting into the systemic circulation. That's the mucosal bubble. It's not that the virus doesn't get in and cause even local infection. It just doesn't break through that systemic um, to get into the systemic circulation. So the unvaccinated have this bubble and many people are just too complacent. They therefore think that they don't need to worry. It's only a problem for the vaccinated. The problem is, is that this bubble is still fragile. It's not absolutely impenetrable. And so this is how I describe that layer with mucosal immunity. 
And the fact is that the mucosal immunity is not flat. So I've got here this image that I tried to uh, explain in the course in some more detail, but this is the level of mucosal immunity. So this is going up to be high, and this is over time. And what you will find is that depending on what's happening, if you're stressed, so if at this point you're great, you're taking all of your supplements, you're feeling good, you're doing your exercises, your mucosal immunity is at its peak. But maybe there's a bit of problems um, at work or there's stress, you, you, you've been out in the rain, I don't know. Mucosal immunity drops right down because it's just not functioning the same. That's when you have the risk of infection. The problem is, is that if you have a virus circulating all the time, this is the point, the probability of this occurring increases dramatically. And that's where I'm trying to advise people that at the moment we have extremely high circulation of virus. And it's there all the time. So any break in the mucosal immunity, stress levels going up, you know, um, you were working for uh, 24 hours and your immunity drops, whatever it is, because there is so much virus around, any break in your mucosal immunity could then cause infection. And once there is infection, there is a risk that it could break through into your systemic circulation. Breaking through this mucosal immunity into the systemic circulation is what I believe is now the risk that you have with regards to all of these things, hospitalization, cardiovascular, coagulation, diabetes, fatigue, gastrointestinal, all of these complications. So every time that risk increases, we don't know what would happen at four or five. We can only presume that the trajectory will continue. So this virus is doing a slow hit, and this is why I call it the slow kill. It's just hitting and hitting and hitting. It's just no longer doing it as a sudden severe COVID-19, but the mortality is still quite significant. So this is why I say, this is not over. Whatever court you are in, everybody needs to come together. This is a time for us to find solutions together. You, we all have people in the different cohorts. And the aim at this point should be to try and find solutions for everyone, not for people to feel smug that they are okay and everybody else is suffering. That's not the standard of care that I believe we should be aspiring to. If there is one thing that the pandemic has highlighted is how easily people get into their little ideological groups, not concerned about the interests of others and leave others to suffer. Please, let's try and see if we can be better this time and not allow ourselves to go down that kind of road. We have to work together. Have a great evening.